Nadia Medley was a widow, a single mom to 14-year-old daughter Peyton, and best friend of Rebecca Lorenz. She was really close with me and my two girls. She was a really good friend, though. I could talk to her about anything and everything. Nadia had gone through a really rough time. She had struggled not only with the loss of her baby, but the loss of her husband as well. And she was pretty down up until she met Mike. Mike Bollinger, a commercial pilot living in Ogden, Utah, just outside Salt Lake City. One day, he walked into Nadia's massage spa, and sparks flew. It just looked like she was in love. She was so happy. She's smiling all the time. Rebecca says Mike told Nadia he was single and hadn't been in a relationship for 10 years. So Mike really got Nadia to turn all of the sorrow around. She became this happy person, and he just took really good care of her. He would take her out. He would take her to dinner. He would take them hiking. Peyton was very close with Mike. This is super cool. He took really good care of her too. Like sometimes Mike would pick up Peyton from school and sometimes he would take Peyton out to lunch. Peyton even got to the point where she started calling Mike dad. I'm having a lot of fun right now. And from the looks of these home videos, it was instant fatherhood. Mike took Peyton out in the woods and taught her how to shoot. There you go. They even frolicked in the fallen leaves. Oh. <laughs> Leg wrestling like two teenagers, even though Mike was 60. <laughs> they just had a close relationship, but it was a father kind of relationship. Protective of Peyton. Protective, like, he loved her. Mike lived in this modest house in Ogden, not far from Nadia's. But weirdly, Rebecca says the closeness of their homes didn't translate to togetherness in bed. Nadia had said that she had spent the night at his house one time. I never understood why they never spent the night at each other's house. In my head, he hadn't been in a relationship in over 10 years. So I was just thinking maybe he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to get into anything too fast. And then Nadia asked Mike for help paying the mortgage. She had asked him for help maybe two or three times on her mortgage because when her husband passed away, nothing was left for her because he was not working. And the last time she asked him, like the third, second or third time, he's like, well, this is moving too fast. I can't do this. She had told me that she had seen one of his paychecks and it was $10,000 in one month. And I'm just like, geez, pilots make a lot of money, you know? Rebecca says arguments over money led to a brief separation. She shared these texts from Nadia. He told me separation wasn't making him feel any better. We really have a hard time being apart at this point. But nothing could keep these two lovers apart. Like two weeks later, she announced that he had asked her and Peyton to move to Idaho with them. Mike bought this farm on the outskirts of Caldwell, Idaho. Nadia was so excited, she posted this video on Facebook. Well, folks, here's my new backyard. When I saw the video of Nadia that she posted um, at her new place in Idaho, you could hear the happiness in her voice. She, she was so happy. It was an adorable little spread, blue skies and green fields covered with sweet white clover. Nadia's horses and dogs would certainly be as happy as she was. This is where the chickens live. It was only five acres with a small farmhouse, but to Nadia, it was a palace and she'd be sharing it with her Prince Charming. I remember Nadia telling me, you know, like she, Mike was gonna be the guy she spends the rest of her life with. It seemed to be happily ever after until the day they got a surprise visit from Mike's wife. Mike Bollinger had just bought a farm in Idaho, one he would share with his new family, his girlfriend Nadia Medley and her daughter Peyton. Yeah, baby, we're loving it. Farm life for Nadia and Peyton seemed to be all unicorns and rainbows. And she said, you know, just the other day, Mike and I were talking about how much we liked living together. Hello, everybody. It's me, Peyton, and I am back for another new video with my mom. But the fairy tale is about to crumble into dust. I know that um, 
Everybody has their secrets, but this was not one of Nadia's. That secret was right at the front door. It was Cheryl, Mike's wife. You heard right, his wife, his current wife. She reportedly told friends she wanted to surprise Mike, and she surely must have. Her unexpected visit apparently blowing the lid off her pilot husband's secret double life sky high. Peyton and Nadia had no idea that Mike was married. That came to a shock for all of us. He was Nadia's Prince Charming, and when we found out he was married, that blew my mind. Cheryl had just retired as a teacher, spending most of her career at the Utah School for the Deaf and the Blind. It seems that Cheryl too was blindsided by her husband's so-called second family. Nadia's best friend, Rebecca Lorenz, wonders, did Mike have a weird plan to have a plural marriage? So many scenarios have been going through my head. Like, was, was he into polygamy? Was he into this? Was he into that? M both Mike and Nadia were very atheist. Very atheist. So, maybe it was a fetish or something? No one really knows every detail of what might have happened in the immediate moments after Cheryl arrived at the farm. When Nadia dropped off the grid, a worried friend called Canyon County, Idaho Sheriff's. And I haven't heard it for, from her for about 10 days. She's really good at responding to texts. So your deputies go on this welfare check. They determined that uh, something was amiss. And then with a little bit further investigation, all of a sudden we have three bodies. Three bodies. Cheryl, Nadia. It's me, Peyton. And 14-year-old Peyton all sprawled on the floor of the same shed that Nadia spoke about in this now chilling video. Hey Shed, can't even see the house because all the trees. Single gunshot wound. That's correct. Execution style? Well, it can be inferred that way. What was the condition of the bodies? Terrible, um, indescribable, because as you, as you probably know, that was at the height of our, our uh, summer, if you will. Uh, it's very warm, very warm outside, and uh, the forensic team and, and all of our teams had a pretty tough time. And that's why it took some time to get the, the bodies identified. Who pulled the trigger? Was it Cheryl, the forgotten wife? Or was it Nadia, the scorned mistress? Canyon County Sheriff Kieran Donahue says it was neither one. We strongly believe, we, we are convinced that it's a uh, Mr. Bollinger, who committed this crime, is our number one suspect. I'm, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm sitting here and I cover murders, I cover love triangles. What's the end game here? It's, uh, your question is as good as our question because did they, did they, did the women find out about it when they got here, about each other? And that escalated to a point where something's gotta give? I don't know. When do you think the women were murdered? By our estimates, by the coroner's estimates, um, Roughly 10 days before we became aware of it. 10 days head start, Mike Bollinger is a fugitive on the run. But where is he? To me, the evidence points that he's still here in this country, right? Probably within the West. Sheriff Donahue says three weeks later, Bollinger's car was discovered at the entrance to a dense forest in Wyoming. Where in Wyoming? In very rugged country, uh, Teton County, Wyoming. This is really rugged country. I mean, as rugged as it gets, a lot of grizzly bears. So if the grizzlies haven't gotten him yet, this sheriff in the black hat says he will. Crime Watch Daily joining the nationwide manhunt for Mike Bollinger, the sheriff taking us inside his command center. Sheriff, what are we looking at here? Well, this is a representation of, of the three states where, where evidence was gathered and of course, uh, so Ogden, Utah, where, where these folks lived before coming over here to the state of Idaho. And then back here at Caldwell, Idaho is up, represented up here, which is where the crime, where the murders took place, just out of, just out of town here. And then of course, uh, Wyoming, which is the Bridger Teton National Forest, which is where we located uh, the car that he was driving. How many acres are we talking about here for searching? Uh, thousands upon thousands upon thousands if we really wanted to search it. Tens of thousands of acres. How do they search that huge area? 
you know, you ha you start with where the car is, which is at the end of a remote uh, camp uh, trailhead, and then you just start your search pattern from there. And quite frankly, you're you've got to widen that at all times. Tens of thousands of acres, yeah, right? Truly. That's remarkable. But it's the five acres of the farm, the murder scene, that produced key clues. T tell me about this area. It doesn't appear to be as remote as I expected it. You know, it's, it's just outside of city limits, so it's part of the county, if you will, uh, over the county line. And as you can see, there's some areas out here that are, that are open areas. To these people, it probably really felt like country because they got five acres to work with. But to someone who's used to the country, it's really not country at all. We're going to be pulling into this driveway right here. Check it out. So this is the, the gate to the property. I mean, this lane is part of the property, but what you'll see here now is is just how we left it. So this is obviously the gate. Yep, this is the gate. As the and on, barrier. All right. Where were the bodies found? Well, if you look right down through here, uh, down this lane and then to the left, there you'll see some outer sh some outline sheds, mm -hmm. and it was in that in that area that we found the bodies. We are on a busy road. Cars are buzzing by us. There are certainly neighbors. There's a home development right over here. Nobody heard multiple gunshots? Well, we don't know. If they did, they haven't come forward. That house over there, neighbors, what, yeah. 50 feet away? And we have yeah. neighbors right 10 feet away right Well, here? 25 feet. I mean, to that fence, maybe 30 feet. It's just puzzling that nobody heard all these gunshots. <laughs> well, Believe me, we're puzzled by it. A puzzling crime this tough lawman is trying to piece together. The sheriff wants us to show you this fresh surveillance image of Bollinger. And this photo was taken after the triple homicide was That's committed. Correct. And it's the only photo that we have, law enforcement has, to your knowledge of what Michael Bollinger looks like now. That, yeah, that, I, that, that I'm aware of. And, uh, and it would be, it was taken fairly soon after, so. This person killed people who thought he loved them. He killed a child. And now at the entrance to the farm, a makeshift memorial. This is somewhat new, and we have no idea who put them up. Three crosses and a Hello Kitty doll for Peyton, an innocent victim of the murderous rampage. I miss Peyton and Nadia very, very much. I think about them every single day. <laughs> Crime Watch Daily wants justice. If Mike Bollinger is indeed the gunman as the sheriff claims, we need to find him now. Jason Matera is here now. Jason, the level of deception here is almost unbelievable. Unbelievable and brazen, Chris, because the women lived fairly close to each other. In fact, the girlfriend was very public about her relationship with Bollinger, especially on social media. A lot of people find it hard to believe he could keep this secret for so long. Is there any evidence these women knew each other? Deputies don't think so, and that's the perplexing thing about this. What was Bollinger's endgame? Both women lived next to each other, and they both knew about the Idaho property. Does Bollinger have any violent past, or do you think he just got caught and panicked? Deputies believe that he just got caught and then he panicked because he has zero violent past, nothing that it would indicate he could be responsible for a triple homicide. Let's talk about the car deputies found at the campground. Why is that so relevant? Uh, because the last known photograph of Mike Bollinger was at a car dealership, so perhaps he was getting a new vehicle to throw police off of his scent, or they believe perhaps he went to the Wyoming forest just to end his life because he was so guilty. All right, now let's show everyone that last known image of Bollinger taken in eastern Idaho. He's described as six foot one, 240 pounds, with gray hair and brown eyes. If you've seen him or know where he might be, call the Canyon County Sheriff's Department at 1-208-454-7531.